may speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends. A gift to pray with you. A gift to see you. Blessing, Joanne. Blessing, Ellie, online, our friends. Blessing to all our friends online. And I am inspired by Jesus today. So today you will have the shortest sermon because Jesus gives today the shortest sermon in Scripture. He says plainly, today the Scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And how wonderful a scripture it is. It is a scripture that inspires me. And I hope it inspires you. Because this is a scripture. Where Jesus defines who he is. And what he will be doing. Oh, and he doesn't wear it in his hometown. Woo! Can you imagine Aunt Sally sitting in the back of the synagogue going, he said, what? Again, this is Jesus where he grew up. This is where he was born and raised. This is his neighborhood. This is where people know who he is. And he shows up and he reads from Isaiah. And he says, I am anointed for what? To bring good news to the poor. To proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to those who are blind, and to let the oppressed go free. This is who I am. And so I'm inspired because I think I might have to remind myself, because Jesus does this to me today somehow, reminds me of who I am as Lester. What was my context? When I was 10 years old, 1984, South Africa. We've given thanks for a wonderful hero recently, right, Desmond Tutu? For being a freedom fighter. What was he fighting for? Let me give you a taste. When I was 10 years old, in my neighborhood, at my church, after the Second World War, the National Party came into power in 1948 on a ticket of racial segregation and support for poor Afrikaners. Many laws were passed to establish this apartheid structure of government. Three most important blocks of legislation were what? Number one, Race Classification Act. Every citizen suspected of not being European was classified according to race. Number two, the Mixed Marriages Act. It prohibited marriage between people of different races. Number three, the Group Areas Act. It forced people of certain races into living a designated area. And what is fascinating is that every year people were reclassified racially. So in 1984, would you believe that 518 colored people, who is really mixed race, were reclassified as white? Two whites were reclassified as Chinese. One white was reclassified as Indian. One white was reclassified as colored, and 89 colored people were reclassified as African, but you couldn't say African because it's a tribute to Afrikaners, so it was reclassified as Bantu. I give that example of when I was 10 years old, so you understand me better, maybe, of what I believe I'm called to be called to. I have a radical, wonderful, I believe, Jesus centered passion for seeing my human family, for people for who Jesus were called and who they were meant to be. Everywhere I go, I always affirm, I see you. I always want to affirm, no matter who you are, you are God's beloved. No matter what you look like, you are called to be God's beloved. I believe that's what God has anointed me to do in the neighborhoods. What is God and what do you believe you are called and anointed to be, dear friends, in your own life? Where 
in today's scripture, are you living out your calling? And what does that look like? Everywhere I go from uh, the smoothies I drink to the coffees I enjoy, every single person I encounter, I take very seriously our baptismal covenant. That wonderful question, will you respect the dignity of every human being? And thank you, Paul, that you remind us that we don't do this in isolation. We do this as the body of Christ. We need one another. We do it together. Even me, as most probably the pinky toe of Christ's body, uh, we do this together. We need one another. We journey together, rooted in Scripture, going hand in hand with holy oil and this most divine supper. And so it is wonderful when I do see you and I pray with you because it, we do it together as the body, as the body of Christ, as the body of the sacramental presence of the good news. And what is the good news? You are God's beloved. You matter. You are significant. And prayer can change your life. And as you know, we voted in 1994 in a democratic vote and we lived into, or at least we tried, to live into being called the rainbow people of God. And so I will always be fueled by offering welcome to all those who have ever felt unwelcome anywhere in their lives. And I do that centered in Jesus. And I give thanks that even in my imperfections, Jesus still says, Hey, Lester, try again. How wonderful. That when we fail, we fail forward. How wonderful that we never give up. How wonderful that we can cope. How wonderful that you are a gift to the neighborhood. How wonderful that you are called by Jesus to take this journey together. What do you believe you are anointed for, friend? What have you, what are you called to do? Where are you called to be a difference maker in the world? Good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, freedom for the oppressed. Strength to you on your spiritual journey. It is not easy. Again, you've heard me say out loud, Church is a hospital for sinners, not a museum for saints. And thank goodness God calls me back to church every Sunday. Because I need all the help I can get so that I don't, out of fear, remain a submarine priest. Only coming up on a Sunday morning with my periscope. Making sure it's clear. No, no, no. Oh, how wonderful. How wonderful to be called to this with you. How wonderful that we keep trying over and over again. How wonderful that we keep doing it in the name of a loving God. And how wonderful that we risk it all in the name of love. I will always say yes to that. <laughs>